As a gamer, it struck me as odd that I've not really covered much gaming on this channel. There are things I've played that maybe don't have enough meat, as it were, for us to tackle, you know, and things that I want to discuss, deep ideas that we can explore. And then there's games that I simply haven't got around to playing yet, that may have a wealth of information and great concepts, and I just haven't got around to them. I don't want to do a video where it's just based off what someone else has said. I want to experience it myself. And for many years there was one franchise that I really wanted to discuss but I hadn't experienced fully. For me to consider it in a, f a full experience I need to have at least made a good crack at completing the game. If I can't because of my own inability, fine. But I need to make a good effort. And I'm ready for the vitriol now when I say that only recently have I finished Bioshock. And that's why I'm talking about it now. It's a series that has some great concepts. And of course the spiritual successor to another great System Shock 2. Which I still haven't played either. So maybe I need to do that soon. But I've always struggled to get into them. Because I'm not an FPS kind of person. They're not my go-to. I prefer RPGs. And people said, you know, you've got like the RPG elements of like sort of signing your plasmids and what have you. And obviously upgrading with Adam and the plasmids themselves. You know, you choose your loadout. But that's choosing loadout, that's choosing weapons. That's still FPS territory to me. And so for years I, I, I gave it a try. You know, I'm not one of those who would never just dismiss it out of hand because it was being raved about, for, you know, so I'm gonna give it a good go. But I just couldn't get into it. And finally, I was looking through my back catalogue, I was like, I've got the remastered version for free because I had the old version, so let's see how that plays. And something clicked this time. I was going through it, I was enraptured, if you will, into the story. And it just took me on such a great journey. One of the benefits of the remastered version is that it has a director's commentary of sorts. I wouldn't really call it a director's commentary, it's more of an integrated documentary. As you're exploring levels, you'll find little film reels lying around, which is great in this kind of environment where you see film reels a lot anyway. They do kind of blend in, but they are there. And if you pick them up, you can either watch the, you know, the piece straight away or you can go back to the main menu later. And you don't get them at the end either. I, I check this. Any that I've missed, I've got to go back in if I want to watch the whole documentary. But that adds a, a, another layer that really just reinforced what I wanted to talk about. Even from when I first tried it and had the first experience of, you know, do you rescue or do you harvest, not kill, the little sister. That gripped me as an interesting player choice. Because the benefits are greater. You will have so much more Adam that you don't know what to do with. So you'll be stronger, faster. But there's the moral question. Can you justify to yourself killing these girls? And okay, they are, as said in the documentary, 3D meshes with a texture applied, virtual assets, voiced by an adult woman, but they are there to evoke the idea of children. We have a natural instinct to protect children. And at one point they were believed to be called little girls, but then they changed it to little sisters. And then you get an even stronger familial bond there. You will have this connection in a greater way. Because just a girl, it's, it's someone who is not related to you. There's no links. But a little sister, that's your flesh and blood. And that was a clever move. I, like many people who really find themselves drawn into the world of games, could not just see them as a mesh. Every single rescue I did, I felt that, yes, I, I've saved you. And the little girls, you know, saying, thank you, mister, you know, it was, it was a beautiful moment. And of course I got the, you know, the, the sweet ending of him actually having a life and a family of sorts. But that idea of multiple endings was a sticking point for Ken Levine, Levine, one of those, because the idea the big showcase piece that everyone knows, I think. Would you kindly? When we get the reveal of what Atlas has done, well, Fontaine, and the whole thing with killing Ryan. 
Until I played it, I thought that was actually a choice. But no, it's a cutscene. You have no player agency. I said it with the Tomb Raider video, which again is one that took me far too long to get to. Player agency is a big thing, and you've got to feel like you're experiencing this. Obviously, I did say in that as well, it's easier when you're first person. But you have that taken away, but you're still in a first person shot. You are watching yourself beat Ryan to death with a golf club. Because that's what my control is. And then you go on the little quest to free yourself of it and have the weird ending that I don't think anyone fully thinks is the best way for that to end, like this boss battle. But, you know, it it's not the, the, the showpiece. It's the idea that you are not a man. You do not choose. Because a man chooses. A slave obeys. And that moment... I'd seen it in videos, of course, talking about great twists in video games and what what have you. But that moment, experiencing, you know, experiencing it yourself is so much of a different beast. And I love that moment. This was a game that took me far too long. And I I don't hate myself for it. I just feel I've I've robbed myself of an experience I could have had earlier. But I think being sort of older and more worldly, I guess to a degree, as I am now, help me enjoy that more for what it is. And I have big praise for everyone involved who who, who made this. But I was going to talk about the, the dual ending, because, yeah, Ken hated the idea. 2K were pretty hands-off, he says, but that was one thing they wanted. They wanted this choice, which just didn't mesh with this idea of a lack of player agency. You're so used to being in controlling games, but in fact, you're not. You're, you're, I mean, you can just go and explore. You can ignore Atlas as much as possible. But there's going to come a point where you've got to still follow that path. Because everything has been explored as much as you can. So there is still a lack of agency to a degree. This is why it's structured in that way. And he really hated this idea of, of multiple endings. There was going to be like a middle ground ending that was a bit bittersweet. And I'd have been interested to see that, but I'm really happy with what we got. It's a really well done game. It's, you know, got so many great ideas that actually are put into practice. And I think it's definitely one of my top ten of all time. So I definitely need to get onto the rest of the series and the other Tomb Raiders. But I think that'll do it for this week. I don't normally do this, but I've got to take the opportunity to ask, would you kindly like this video... Comment your thoughts on Rapture and the Bioshock series and give us that subscribe. I've also restructured the Patreon so you get more for less. So please have a look at that. And if you can, please give a little. It all helps. But until next time, as always, thanks for watching and take care.